Am I the asshole for not acknowledging that I have a sister? Nine years ago, we found out that my mother had a five-year affair with someone she met from work. My parents divorced and she went to get remarried to the man, Greg. My mother moved her husband and his daughter from a previous marriage into our house and I lived with them before I left for college. I remained in minimal contact with them until Kylie, my stepsister, joined my company and started working in my department. Nobody was aware of our relations since we had different last names and I told Kylie not to disclose anything about this. Last Friday, while clocking into work with a few of my coworkers, Kylie came up to me and asked if I could come home for a family dinner. By lunch, our entire department was gossiping about it and Kylie would confirm their suspicions. Fed up with all of this, I told the department that I do not have a sister. Things died down at work and I agreed to make it to dinner considering it was my mother's birthday. At dinner, I was bombarded with questions about why I refused to acknowledge my sister at work and refused to even call her my sister. My stepfather Greg told me I was a petty bully for embarrassing Kylie at work and that he has had enough of me mistreating his daughter. He told my mother that my misbehavior was a result of my parents coddling. He demanded that I address him as my father and Kylie as my sister and to tell everyone at work that too. At this point, I had enough of his relentless chastising, so I told him that all he signed was a marriage certificate and not adoption papers, so I am not his daughter, therefore will not be addressing him as my father. I brought up the fact that I know my dad has created an account for my college fund and paid child support each month, but they use the funds to purchase a new car and to pay off credit card debt. I always found it weird that Kylie never had to get a job to go to college and could afford to stay in a nice apartment during her years there. Kylie was crying by the end of the argument. My mother broke down and yelled at me to stop while Greg called me an ungrateful bitch. I told them that if they only had the capacity to acknowledge and care for one daughter, then do not expect me to be in Kylie's life as her big sister and left the house. I guess Kylie posted about it on social media because friends and family called me up. Some told me I was being harsh and unfair to Greg and my mother who took care of me as well as Kylie who had nothing to do with this while some understood where I was coming from. So am I the asshole for my reaction? This is the story of the time my client got arrested while I was doing her makeup. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. This story takes place whenever I used to be a traveling makeup artist. I would travel to my client's homes or to their photo shoot destination. On this particular occasion, my client had asked me if I could meet her at her home because she had somewhere to be, but it wasn't for a photo shoot or anything like that. She never exactly told me what the event was she was going to, but I didn't want to ask a lot of questions because she seemed kind of nervous or shy. We set up the appointment and a couple days before she sent me her address, which I noticed was in kind of a sketchy part of town. But whenever I arrived at her home, it was absolutely gorgeous. This woman had three or four cars outside. Mind you, she lives alone. And as soon as you walked into the front door, there was a legit chandelier. My thought process at the time is that she must be some sort of fixer-upper because her house was way nicer than all the other ones on the block. Aside from the cars and all the decorations in the house, the woman actually seemed pretty normal and very shy. When she greeted me at the door, she was wearing what I would wear if I was getting my makeup done, which is like sweatpants and a big t-shirt. She didn't say much, she just showed me the makeup look that she wanted me to do on her face, and she told me she was in kind of a hurry, so if we could do it as quickly as possible while still making it look good, she would really appreciate that. About halfway through me doing her makeup, my client said she had to take a really important phone call and that she would be back in just a second. I saw her get on her phone, walk outside, and she was out there for probably 15 minutes. I couldn't hear much, but towards the end of the conversation, I heard her start yelling, and then she calmly walked back in through the front door. She sat back down in my makeup chair and didn't say a word. I asked her if everything was okay, but again, she didn't say anything. She totally ignored my question. As a makeup artist, it's not my job to get into their business, so I just kind of let it go. Not even five minutes later, the police came busting through the front door. And I mean like full SWAT, kicked open the door, bulletproof vests, canines, everything. I was absolutely terrified because I had no idea what was going on. And as soon as my client saw the police come through the door, she picked up and ran. Hey, she's a runner, she's a track star. About five of the police officers took off running after her and the rest came towards me. I put everything in my hands down, threw my hands up and told them I was just here to do her makeup, that I was a makeup artist and she had scheduled an appointment in her home. They took me in for questioning just to make sure that I wasn't part of whatever scheme she was involved in. And afterwards they told me I should be glad they got there when they did because this woman was part of a huge drug ring. I wish I could say that after that I stopped going to clients' houses to do their makeup. But to be honest, no matter how terrifying that was, it was so crazy and exciting. I still do makeup in clients' homes. I just make sure to check them out just a little bit more before I show up in some drug lord's house. On the bright side, though, at least she didn't have to go to jail looking all musty because her makeup was almost done, so I know that mugshot was super cute.
This is just a compilation of mini fights I got into teachers that, again, don't warrant their own video because they're not an actual story. It was just a time that I was a dick. One time when I was in elementary school, I had a toy or something I wasn't supposed to have, and the teacher was like, give it to me. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna give it to you because you're irresponsible. And the teacher was like, I'm an adult, I'm responsible. And I was like, no, you're not. And she was like, okay, well, what gives you the impression that I'm not responsible? And I was like, two times, two Tuesdays in a row, you forgot to put our tests in our Tuesday folder. You didn't grade our tests, so you're irresponsible. That was a fun phone call for my mom to get. <laughs> Well, my teacher called her, my mom was like, no, yeah, you sound kind of irresponsible. It's like you had one job and you didn't do it. Sorry. On to the next one. So it was a privilege in my IEP that I was allowed to call my mom any time that I felt unsafe or was upset about something. And my teachers hated me for using it. Um, so one time in like fifth grade, I wanted to call my mom because <laughs> my whiteout had broken. And I was really upset about it. And my English teacher was like, no, it's a disruption to class. You're not allowed to do that. And I was like, fuck you. I'm going to the principal. And she was like, what did you say to me? <laughs> Again, when they called my mom, she was like, mm, he probably shouldn't have said fuck you. But you like did violate his IEP. So one time I asked the teacher, can I go to the bathroom? And predictably, her response was, I don't know. Can you? And my response was, I don't know. Do you want me to piss on your desk? Didn't think so. I'm fucking leaving. One time I got dress coded for having just a tiny bit too much cleavage because I wasn't wearing a crew neck and I had tiggled bitties, so any fucking shirt that I wore was bound to spill Tata. And I just got real fed up and was like, why are you looking at my tits, Mr. Smith? Why are you staring at my tits? Nobody else has commented on this. I've been here for six hours. Why are you looking at my tits, you fucking pervert, in the middle of math class? That same teacher later that year tried to dress code me for having like a sliver of bra strap showing, so I just fucking unclipped that bitch, pulled it out the top of my shirt, and went there. Now it won't show, and fucking stuffed it in my bag in the middle of class. No fucks. One day, my sophomore year forensics teacher was just really up my ass about something. I don't even remember what, but I was so annoyed with it. I was just like, what are you on fucking drugs? Leave me alone. Later, we found out she was selling cocaine out of the high school parking lot. So I was right. <laughs> I once had an art teacher tell me that I should just give up on art because I wasn't good enough to make a career out of it. And I just kind of looked at her and was like, mm, I don't think I'm going to trust your judgment on that because you know what they say, those who can't teach. She already didn't like me because I stole from the trash because she threw away perfectly good art supplies. Like, damn, Deborah, maybe don't throw out perfectly good $20 markers and I won't take them out of your fucking trash. I killed my sister and no one knows. So you may be asking, why would I kill my own sister? Honestly, out of pure jealousy and immaturity, and I regret it. When I was younger, I was the black sheep of the family. I was super skinny, ugly, no one really thought I was adorable as a child. My sister, Alice, on the other hand, had a beautiful, perfect body, pretty blue eyes, and pale skin. Everyone loved her. I was brain smarts, but no one acknowledged it. When I got A pluses, I simply got a good job and that was it. My sister, on the other hand, got a B minus and everyone went berserks. She got a good job, a hug, and a kiss, and an ice cream trip. Sometimes I tagged along. It felt unfair, and I felt unloved. So one day I came home and Alice wasn't there. I asked what happened and apparently she almost died from consuming peanut butter. Apparently she had a peanut butter allergy. This gave me an idea. One day, I baked a bunch of cookies for everyone and put a crap ton of peanut butter in the specific cookie I gave to her. My mom smelled it and panicked. My mom smelled it and panicked, and before she could do anything, Alice ate it. Alice ate it. She ended up choking and couldn't breathe and she fainted. I was happy, but then they started yelling at me. I fake cried saying I forgot and they said it was okay. They ended up driving her to the hospital and they took her to the emergency room. She was in a coma for three days. This ended up taking more attention away from me instead of me gaining some. It's like I couldn't win. So after that, everything was fine. She came back home and life went back to normal. Flash forward, we were 15 years old. She was popular in high school and I was the loser, yet again, the black sheep. I was even more jealous of her. She tried talking with me and bonding with me, but I just pushed her away. I was so mad at her that I couldn't be mature enough to actually understand her. One day, I saw a video of how you could die from consuming too much cherry pits, and then I realized, Alice loves cherries and drinks cherry juice as well. I figured I could grind up the cherry pits every time she threw them out and put them into the cherry juice drink. So over time, I managed to gather 100 pits and I did exactly this. I put it in her drink and then I waited. I went to the library because I didn't want to deal with anything. And then when I came back home, I saw ambulances outside. My mother was crying and bawling her eyes out and so was our father. My mom came up to me and told me she had bad news and I asked her what it was. She said that Alice was dead. 
I asked them how, and they said they didn't know, but that's what the cops were trying to figure out, because she didn't seem suicidal. I got nervous because I didn't want to get caught, but I waited it out, and they are now suing the company of the Jews for one million, because cases like this have happened many times. After that, I still didn't get attention. So I decided I honestly didn't want to live anymore. I was going to leave a blank note in my bedroom, and just hope for the best. As I was filling the bathtub, my mom rushed in and asked what this was. She was holding the paper I left in my bedroom. I started breaking down and explaining how I felt like no one loved me growing up. No one acknowledged what I did. No one ever appreciated me. I felt like a waste of space. My mom said that she was sorry and she explained that my sister Alice actually had a learning disability and autism. So they tried their best to make her feel better. I instantly regret what I did to my sister. I should have asked before doing what I did. But instead I misunderstood. They didn't do it out of favoritism. They did it out of pity. Follow for more story times and feel free to leave your story time to the link in my bio. Hi, story time. So when I was in college, I started dating this guy. And right after we started dating, he moved to China for a year. So we did long distance. And when he got back, we decided to take this really long camping trip so that we could like reconnect and like do it in a tent. So we get to the campsite. It's like in the middle of the woods. There's no cell reception or anything. And we're the only ones at this like entire like campground area. So we're like making hot dogs or whatever. And someone pulls into the campsite like right next to ours, which I was like rude, like go go somewhere else. But then they got out of their car and were like head to toe in a white robe. And no, the, the hood wasn't pointed or anything. It was like, it was more New York Fashion Week than it was KKK, but it was still like, it was very unsettling. So I like tapped my boyfriend's shoulder who's like cooking dinner or whatever. And I was like, did you see that? And he was like, no, I didn't see it. And there were like enough trees and bushes that you couldn't really see through unless it was like perfectly lined up. So I'm kind of freaked out. It's getting dark. I'm like, hey, let's just go in the tent. Like let's hang out and just like eventually go to sleep, right? Cool. So then it's like the middle of the night and I wake up with my boyfriend's hand over my mouth and he says, shh, don't make any noise. And I was like, I asked you to wake me up with a surprise, but this is not really what I had in mind. And it suddenly becomes very obvious that someone is like screaming bloody murder from the campsite next to us. Here's a, here's a reenactment of, of how I woke up when I realized that that was happening. <laughs> we didn't know what was happening. Thought someone was getting murdered. There was a bear over there. I don't know what the fuck was happening. It was raining so hard. We were like just in our underwear. We run out to the car. They're still screaming. We get in the car and we like drove away as fast as we could. We're like halfway down the road and I realize that not only is my laptop in that tent with my senior thesis on it, but that tent is now slowly filling with water because we left it open in an attempt to get away and it's like pouring rain outside. So I turn to my boyfriend and I'm like, could we just like go back real quick? We go back to the campsite and that person is sitting in their car, just staring straight ahead like this. And my boyfriend's like, um, I have an ax in the back. And I was like, well, what exactly are you planning on doing with that? So he's like, I'm going to keep guard at the tent. You grab your computer and we'll get the fuck out of here. So I run into the tent. I'm trying to grab stuff. I don't have my glasses on. I'm like totally blind. He's at the front of the tent like this. At this point, the person from the other campsite yells over to us and says, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be alone. I don't think a Prius has ever gone as fast as it did the night we drove out of that campsite. But the good news is the guy I was dating is now my husband because you just like can't break up with someone after that.
่ดีเหมือนกันอืม